Hello and welcome to Lost Media Chronicles, a show which discusses lost movies, music, art, you name it. You may have noticed I'm not your regular host. One thing I have a much cooler accent. I'm Lauren of the Cartoon Physicist Noilist, in which I review various TV shows and movies from the 2000s, and Schlock and Terror, a podcast retrospective of VO Nasties. Today I've been brought in to talk about something I normally don't get the chance to talk about in my review show or podcast. My number one favorite TV series. I met my other number one favorite TV series. It's Mystery Science Theater 3000. In the not too distant future, next Sunday. Some of you may be asking a question that my parents ask whenever I blabber on about the show. What the hell is Mystery Science Fear 3000? First off, shame on you for being an internet user and not know anything about this show. Secondly, you know how you and your friends watch a bad movie together and make jokes about it? Well, there's a show based on that concept. In fact, those types of jokes are called riffs. The show is about a janitor who worked at this one institute named Joel Robinson, played by the show's creator, Joel Hodgson, who was launched into space on a satellite loved by two mad scientists known as Mads. Partially because he's better at inventing than they are, but it's also because they want to use him as a guinea pig for their nefarious plan to take over the world by driving people mad with the worst movie ever made. Yeah, nowadays the world thrives on bad media, a mindset partially contributed by MST3K. We'll get to that. Anyway, Joel used the parts that would have at least stopped a bad movie to make robots. Crow and Servo are specifically there to keep Joel from going insane by riffing at these movies with him. And there you are, a premise. Summarized a lot better by the show's actual theme song. The premise of the show changed due to fluctuating cast members, cancellations, and executive members. As a matter of fact, a new incarnation of the show is being made. So it makes sense that the episodes of Season 0 from 1988 weren't the same as the show we all know. The 15-minute pilot used to pitch the series to the KTM Bay general manager, Dan O'Connor, was lost until it was shown in the Archon Bay 2 convention in St. Louis on the 3rd of October 2008 by the writers and cast of the series for Best Friends. Mads and Servo didn't exist, Gypsy was the male Gypsium, and Joel doesn't riff or slime all that much. I guess the movie's theme was just that awesome. At least Misty know the movie well as a great wink in the former final episode of the series, even before the pilot was shown off in convention. It's honestly not that lost, as you can find on YouTube. But the three episodes that aired afterwards are truly lost. Kinda. The show officially premiered at 6pm on Thanksgiving Day, the 24th November 1988. The episodes that premiered are considered lost. The first was Invaders of the Deep. It's not a movie, just episodes of the Proto Thunderbird series, Stingray cobbled together. Then there was Revenge of the Mysterions from Mars. Again, it's a film made from the episodes of the Super Marination series, Captain Scarlet and the Mysterions. Finally, there's Star Force Fugitive Alien 2 which Missy's note was just a movie edited by the infamous Sandy Frank using footage from the Japanese sci-fi series Star Wars. It was re-riffed in episode 18 season 3. They're not that lost. At least the host segments aren't. In 2009, executive producer and voice slash puppeteer of Gypsy, Jim Mellon, added a Genesis section to the show's website, which included high-definition clips of the lost episode's host segments. That's about as close as we can get. Brains aren't exactly proud of their KTMA episodes, especially since the riffs at the time were mostly not scripted. Plus, KTMA was pretty cheap. It existed as a get-rich-quick scheme. They had a great supply of bad movies that the show could use, but the station paid more attention to their vending machines than the editing suite. No VCR record copies are known to exist. That's why the phrase, keep circling the tapes, was created. They only aired once. The only copies of the full episodes exist today as master tapes owned by Jim Mallon. But that doesn't mean no one was watching those three episodes. Even the KTMA era gained fans. Jim Mallon himself set up the phone line for viewers to phone in. The response was phenomenal. It extended the show's initial run from 13 episodes to 21. 
the fan club was formed and the show's first live appearance gathered a crowd of 600 misties. Thankfully, fans were around to record episodes after those three and onwards. And thankfully, the KTMA had money troubles, otherwise it wouldn't have gone bankrupt and sold the show to Comedy Central, the comedy channel at the time, which gave the show the polishing that it needed. Back in 1995, long after they struggled within the KTMA era and were enjoying the last leg of the Comedy Central era between season 6 and 7, Best Brains was collaborating with multimedia company Voyager to produce the show's official CD-ROM. Due to setbacks of Voyager, the project was cancelled just when it was partially completed. It was going to have some cool stuff on it as well, like a flight simulator and two shorts ripped by the bots and the show's second host, Mike Nelson. One was Simon Venezuela, a short made to encourage Americans to work in Venezuela's oil fields because you're a goddamn comic if you don't, and what's it to you, which just basically promoted my love so much that it seemed like they were ready to say it can cure cancer. You can find the riff of the Simon Venezuela wear it online, but of course not. What's it to you? I'm sure you're wondering, why should I care about some low-budget cable show that just made fun of movies that no one will watch in the first place? Well, the show changed film criticism. MSC3K unintentionally introduced two unique things to film criticism and to moviegoers in general. The show got us to laugh at these sort of films, not be angry. Just laugh, have fun. And when you make jokes, you find yourself adding a sense of humor to your opinion. More character, more personality. That's what critics are doing now, being entertainers as well as analysts. Secondly, it changed our mindset regarding films. Since we were having fun and laughing at bad films, it got us wanting to find more bad films to build fun at. Just look at the internet reveal community and the internet in general if you want proof. I'm doing that with my show and podcast. MSD3K and its descendants got us to expand our palette. We know more about bad films than the critics of the past and found the grey area. Because we try to experience as many films as possible for different reasons, we know the difference between the laughably bad fun film that critics of the past would get pissy at and an utterly despicable film that you would just want to see smash into pieces and throw in a volcano. And you need to buy a shark. Preferably a cyborg shark with a uh, lava proof metal. And legs. It needs to go in the volcano somehow. And can breathe lava because, you know, it's still a fish. And I didn't think this were alright. Uh, anyway, my point is, Mystery Science Theater 3000 taught the field of film criticism to loosen up and evolve. And it would be a shame to not see what it was like at first. So you could say Man of the Hands of Fate can teach us more about filmmaking than Citizen Kane. For different reasons, of course. Well, I know. I don't even think Manos is the worst film they ever riffed. I meant in comparison to the wild, wild world of Batwoman. At least you can understand what's going on in Manos. Anyway, tune in next time when Randy covers something boring, like, I don't know, Superman or something. See you later. Hello guys, and thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw here, please subscribe to Shoegazer Productions and check out some of the previous episodes of Lost Media Chronicles. Also check out my channel, which is basically more of me, or well, at least a more exaggerated version of me, blabbering on about TV shows. You can also check out my website for blocked episodes and my podcasts. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.